All right, time to explore Guatemala. So our boat is on the hard and we want to launch it as quickly as possible because every day it's on the hard is the day we are not sailing. Lots of projects need to get done, but we don't have all the supplies we need. So we are headed into town via boat, which is kind of what everybody does here. It's going to be awesome. We're going to show you what the town is like, which is hard for us because we hate having the camera in public. We're rolling into the parking lot now and it is crowded today. Off to a chaotic start. First thing we need is anti-fouling for the bottom. That's going to keep stuff from growing on the bottom of our boat. And so we're here at this hardware shop trying to look at their anti-fouling. They have a local brand. And so we're asking around people from the boatyard, like, is this a good brand? Otherwise, we'll see if we can find more international brands that we've heard of. Because we don't want to put something on the bottom of the boat that won't last. Oh, they have the tea? They have the tea brand, so I think that's what we'll go with. Because these other bottles on the shelf look old. But you got to look on the label. Some of them are not handy selling. For the moment, it's all this. Yeah, see? spray for the prop. I mean, they're going to bring the uh, Pettit paint from another store to here and I think we have everything. We're just trying to like make like a mental list of like all the things we'll need. I think. How's the um, barrier language? language barrier. Oh man, it's rough. The language barrier for the barrier. The barrier language barrier code is we're, we're getting there. I think We'll get it. We didn't know how to say or communicate that we needed an epoxy, a two-part epoxy barrier coat in Spanish. So we like Google translated it, it still wasn't getting across, and then they, they gave us some rollers and we're like, no. And so then I walked to the paint aisle and I'm like, necesito epoxy para después anti-fouling, because they know the word anti-fouling is the same. Um, and so finally they're like, oh, oh, a primer. <laughs> We're just, we're using the wrong words. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we got all the things, but we don't want to carry it all back to the dinghy dock parking lot. So we're actually going to go get the dinghy. Hola. We're going to go get the dinghy and we're going to take it to their waterfront and pick up the paint that way. So we don't have to carry it the whole time. I look like a crazy person right now. We do this because we love you guys. Ooh, I'm sweaty. It's back. What? Okay, I was saying that the water part, the water dock, is right there on the other side of this dock. Um, but it's just really far to walk. So we'll just move the dinghy right there and grab it and we'll be good. But I had no idea how to say that. So I was like pointing and we really got to uh, start our Spanish tutoring again. I think it first. You want me to? What? When did this happen? It just happened. Like, that's why I killed the throttle. I'm grumpy because... I watched it happen, so I killed it. <laughs> Brett killed the throttle, and so I got thrown. And then I yelled at him, and he's like... Because I thought he just wanted to look at a boat. Now I'm cranky because now I'm embarrassed that I got mad at him because the reason he stopped the dinghy is because the line went in the water, which is a good reason to stop the dinghy. We don't want that in our prop. Aggressively. What I did was a great thing. <laughs> but it bothered me. Yeah. I'm sorry I got mad at you. Wait, I didn't want to look at his bottom page though. We met this guy at the boat yard and he just raised his water line quite a lot. So I wanted to check out the boat and see what it looks like in the water now that he's launched. Because we're thinking about also raising our water line quite a lot. And so if we do that, it would look a lot like 
Yeah. It'll look a lot like his boat. His, it's a similar boat. It's a, a 146, 466. So pretty similar design. What do you guys think? Does the waterline look good? It seems a little high, but I feel like it's because it's really I feel like his front water tank might be empty right now. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah, it only looks high in the front. Yeah, it only looks high in the front. It, it would look high, yeah, it matches the boot stripe. Yeah, so Crossing the river right here like this is always seriously like a, like a washing basin. Like it's just like a dishwasher or something. I don't know what the word is. Like a washing machine on agitation cycles. Yeah, it's a washing machine on the agitation cycles, but it's like dinging through here. The water is all going different directions because there's so many boats going and all the boats move the water and so the displacement's like, I don't know where to go. You guys don't know this. I just had COVID for the first time. I made it almost three years since the pandemic started and I never got COVID. And then I got it. And I was down and out for almost two full weeks. Sick, sick. I got so sick. And um, today's like my first day wearing clothes and other than a giant t-shirt, you know, and getting out of bed. But I'm still really weak. And carrying my measly one gallon is too heavy. And I'm so tired. So Brett left me and he's gonna come back and my only goal right now is to make it into the shade. And I would buy a Gatorade, but I don't have any money. And that's in Brett's pocket. I can't even hold up the camera. Hey, Marcella. Yeah. Uh, this is the petite, yeah. Yeah. Brett's taking Brett's. Yeah, that, that is really Should good. be good. Yeah. Just one gallon? I'm feeling better. I'm not sick anymore, but I'm weak. So I'm out of breath. Good. So Brett's going to come back and get it. I can't even carry you one. Uh, no, Brett will come back. No. I'll just wait. I'll just wait. Let's go. I'll carry the paint can. Yeah. <laughs> or the paint tray, I mean. We bought two gallons, but we have the white. We have one gallon of white. So we'll do our coat of white paint, and then we'll do two black coats. Marcelo's helping me carry the paint. <laughs> He's a really good person. <laughs> the easiest and fastest thing would have been for us to simply scuff and paint over the existing white anti-fouling. But considering what this boat has been through, we thought it imperative to inspect, at least down to the barrier coat, that all still looks good, especially after that bit of heavy weather sailing. We decided to hire Nanawana to help with the removal, which wound up being the best decision, considering we could hardly get out of bed, not to mention hold up a sander while we were so sick. Once we were able, we then sanded and cleaned the gel coat for the raised waterline area, with the added benefit that this softened that hard edge on the old barrier coat, helping the new coat to blend in. Marshmallow whip. Marshmallow fluff? Yeah, like slightly warmed up marshmallow fluff. I feel like getting a scraper or something. We are well on our way to be painting the epoxy barrier coat portion. Last time we did the bottom, I painted on the epoxy barrier coat, but because we've decided to raise the water line, we need to epoxy barrier coat that area of the gel coat. So that's what we're doing today. So it's like a strip such as this across the whole boat such as this <laughs> that we're going to do with the epoxy barrier coat uh, and 
The whole reason you do that is because the vinyl ester and polyester resins that boats are made out of are very susceptible. I got stuck in that word earlier too. Sus prone. Susceptible, prone <laughs> to blistering, to osmosis. And that's a huge pain, you don't want that. So the epoxy barrier coat is going to basically give a layer and protect it, which is very important. Um, and we should get going on that tonight, but the sun's setting, which means the bugs are coming out, which means Brett and I are no longer happy campers. And so we're going to go get the bug spray out of the dinghy. And then we're gonna roll it on. And it's the perfect time to do this because after you initially mix the epoxy barrier coat, it has to have like 20 to 30 minutes to kinda, you know, start. Induction time. <laughs> yeah. And so it's sitting right now, kinda warming itself up. It's, it's like a <laughs> diesel on a cold winter morning. You've gotta give it a minute before you can run. Good analogy. Thanks. been heated. This video is sponsored by Off. I wish. Off if you want to sponsor us. Wow. There's a cinematic perfection in here. This is why people watch us. It's the only perfume I've ever worn. <laughs> that wasn't a real sentence. <laughs> Be careful not to roll past the tape. Round one of the barrier coat is on, on just this part here. We're only gonna barrier coat here, uh, and then we'll touch up some other little places that need it. But for the most part, this is all, this barrier coat that Jay did last year, two years ago, two years ago, is still in great shape. So we're just gonna leave that and try and tie in the new one best we can. Overshot it a little bit. By the end, it was, it was getting sticky, so I really pushed, and then it gave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's so much brighter on camera than it is in real life right now. It looks like it's like midday, but actually there's the sunset reflecting on the boat. So. We decided the eye of the camera is more like the dogs than human eyes. We decided that? Yeah, we talked about was it. I there? Sometimes Brett doesn't listen to me when I talk. So it wasn't a we decision. You nodded and agreed, hundred hmm. percent. Anyway, uh, the camera can see better in the dark than we can, which I think is kind of cool.
mean as a mirror here. Not too bad. Uh, I just finished the first coat of anti fouling white. Uh, Jade is at a girls' night. She got invited to a girls' night, and so I finished the second half of the boat, the starboard side, by myself while she ran to the girls' night. And uh, it was perfect timing. I ran out of paint at the end. Like, I, there's literally nothing left in the can. Now, there are some places that we didn't do, like we didn't do the rudder, we didn't do underneath the keel, and then, of course, where the stands are. So we needed a little more than a gallon total, but pretty dang close. I'm very happy about that. Uh, what's up? Penny was looking at something funny. Um, but yeah, I'm going to let that rest for a little while. The next coat, we are going to do black. So I'm going to put on a black bottom paint. And I think we will end up finishing with black. I think I'm going to do this white one, and then I think we'll do two coats of black. Uh, and while that cures, I'm going to take a little break and walk the dogs. Oh, wow. I don't think I've mentioned it. It's been a little while since I filmed. Um, but you may notice that my beard is significantly longer. Maybe you won't notice. I don't know how much you pay attention. But my beard is longer than probably a previous clip. And that is because I am taking a, uh, a note out of Sailing Solianas uh, Kirk. I don't know if it was an original idea by you or if it's a normal thing. But I remember watching a video one time where Kirk said he's not shaving until they launch. And so I have taken up that mindset. I am not shaving until we launch. We were supposed to have launched about a week ago and we are maybe launching the end of this week, but uh, it's getting pretty long. Uh, Jade likes it. So, I mean, that's, that's a good sign. I did have to trim my mustache. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't allowed to kiss her with a long mustache and it was kind of getting annoying. So I did trim the mustache. So I don't know if that counts or not, but regardless, uh, beard. I don't know if you could see those guys. They were calling. They wanted us to film them. Oh, did they? Yeah, the young guys. <laughs> 